precious memories Unseen angels Sent from somewhere to my soul How they linger Ever near me Sacred past unfolds Precious memories How they linger How they ever flood my soul In the stillness Of the midnight Echoes from the past I hear Old time singing Gladness ringing Precious sacred scenes unfold I believe for every drop of rain that falls, a flower grows. I believe that somewhere in the darkest night, a candle glows. I believe that everyone that goes astray, someone will come. Show the way I believe I believe I believe Above the storm The smallest prayer Will still be heard I believe That someone In the great somewhere Here's every word Every time I hear a newborn baby cry Or touch a leaf Or see the sky
precious memories Unseen angel Sent from somewhere to my soul How they linger Ever near me Sacred past unfolds Precious memories How they linger How they ever flood my soul In the stillness past I hear old time singing gladness ringing from that lovely land somewhere precious memories be free from your burden of sin. There's power in the blood, power in the blood. Would you or evil a victory win? There's wonderful power in the blood. There is power, power, wonder working power in the blood of the land. There is power in the precious blood of the Lamb.
Jesus your King. There's power in the blood, power in the blood. Would you live daily His praises to sing? There's wonderful power in the blood. There is power, power, wonder-working power in the blood of the Lamb. There is power, power, wonder-working power in the precious blood of the Lamb. In the precious blood of the Lamb. How many of you were dancing? How many of you just patting your foot? How many of you were asleep? <laughs> At least you're honest. Good morning! Young BC. But those of you, you just don't know what we do here, do we? We wave. You remember that? That's our good morning. Hey, we're so glad to be here. Didn't they do a good job on that? Amen. I love Clint singing. Did I say a funny? Are y'all laughing behind my back again? <laughs> we're, uh, we're so glad you're here. We're glad to be here in the house of God. We, we have a lot of fun here, but there's nobody any more serious about uh, worshiping our, our Father and our Savior, Jesus Christ, and these people up here. How about a big hand for the band up here today? Amen. I think that could kill Satan with the jawbone of a donkey. I do. We're so glad you're here. Join in with us, won't you? Have you been to Jesus for the cleansing power? Are you washed? In the blood of the Lamb Are you fully trusting in His grace this hour? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Are you washed in the blood? In the soul-cleansing blood of the Lamb Are your garments spotless on a white as snow? Are you washed? In the blood of the Lamb Are you walking daily by the Savior's side? Are you walking? In the blood of the Lamb Do you rest each moment in the crucified? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Are you washed in the blood? In the soul-cleansing blood of the Lamb Are you washed in the spotless sun and white as snow? Are you washed in the blood? Thank you, brother. Our. What a blessing. I can tell Melissa's been at work y'all this week. No. Nope. Mike, yeah, I saw everything's that. been organized. I won't know nope, how to find nope. anything. You, no, <laughs> Melissa didn't do that. She did it. Oh. Thank you. <laughs> there we go. It, even the towels we use have been folded. Are they clean? Okay. Just, well, it won't matter because it's holy water we get on them, right? Okay. Uh, well, good morning, everybody. We are very blessed to be here this morning. I'm glad to see everybody here. Praise God. It is time to praise and worship our Lord and Savior. And Brother Mike, would you open us with a prayer? If y'all bow me, please. Heavenly Father, thank you for the gift of another day to worship and to spend time together as a church family. 
And Father, as we hear your message today, just open our minds and our, our hearts to your wisdom. And we pray that it strengthens our faith and, and better equips us to live how you would have us to live. And Father, we look forward to the, the great things you have planned and the, the new beginnings you've got planned for each and every one of us, Father. And as we leave here, watch over us and we pray that everything that we do brings glory to your name. We ask these things in your name. Amen. Amen. Today I want to read to you from Isaiah uh, chapter 43, verse 19. It says, Behold, I will do a new thing. Now it shall spring forth, shall you not know it. I will even make a road in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. You know, every week we talk about, you know, that life is full of challenges, it's full of changes and transitions. You know, and sometimes it can be kind of challenging and uh, to welcome or accept these new, new changes and, and new things that God has in store for us. But this verse reminds us that God is always at work in our lives. He's always in control. He's always creating something fresh and something new, even when we don't see it coming or in, in the emptiest spaces or the hardest times of our lives. And, you know, in times of change, it's natural to feel uncertain or even scared or, or fearful of the, new cha- of the change and the new things. But God promises here that he is the God of new beginnings. And just as he parted the Red Sea and provided water in the desert, God is capable of making a way for us, even when we face situations that we think are impossible. And when we face difficulties, you know, it might feel that we're stuck in a situation that we have no control of or we have no way out. But God promises to make a way. And he can turn our trials into triumphs, he can turn our fear into hope, and he can turn our emptiness into comfort. And God can turn our challenges into opportunities for growth. And if we're watching and we're paying attention, you'll see that he's already at work each and every day bringing something new and great into our lives. You know, we just have to trust in God and God, trust in his guidance and look forward to the new things that he's doing for us. You know, in, in Isaiah 43, 19, it reminds us that God's plans for us are filled with promise and they're filled with hope. You know, so even in the most challenging circumstances, he's making a way for us. So we can be confident in these new beginnings and these new things that he has planned for us, knowing that he's with us every step of the way. Amen. Thank you, brother. Good message. me, Lord, what have I ever done to deserve even one of the pleasures I've known? Tell me, Lord, what did I ever do that was worth loving? me, Lord, if you think there's a way I could ever repay all I've taken from you. Maybe, Lord, I can show someone else what I've been through myself. Oh 
souls in your hands Jesus my souls in Thank you, brother. Thank Amen. You. Did you dance? Huh? Did you dance? Oh, yeah. Dancing on the inside. Anyway, well, good morning again, everybody. And do we have anybody that's here for the first time today? I know we got a few. If you're here for the first time, if you would, just hold your hand up. We want someone to bring you a card by. Just fill that out, and you can drop it in an offering bucket. We don't uh, pass collection here. We just have a bucket in the back. Just drop that card in there, and we would really appreciate let that. let us know what day you cook. No. I'll warn you already to watch out. He's hungry all the time. Well, let's see. We've got some birthdays today. and I, They actually gave me a list. So we don't forget any. And because if somebody decides they want to hide their birthday, I guess, Keith, you've been trolling Facebook? I figured. If it's on Facebook, it's true. There you go. Let's see. We got Sebastian is four years old today. Happy birthday. And we got Debbie Sicking. Dean, Sp Dean, you had a birthday? Yeah. They hadn't run out of them yet, huh? Happy birthday. Sharon Falk, Cindy Brummett, Amber Hartman, Frank, Frank Manage. Is there anybody else I've missed? Yeah, I'll be uh, 72 in Wednesday. Happy birthday. All right. Let's keep it a happy birthday and one, either one of y'all two sing, not me. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, all y'all. <laughs> happy birthday to you. Amen. I know I got a note in my back pocket. I'm going to forget it if I don't... See, everybody gives me things to remember, and then I forget where I put them. <laughs> Let's see. Tonight we got the youth group pizza party. Did you just become a youth? I will. <laughs> I figured for free pizza. <laughs> anyway, we got a youth group pizza party tonight at 6 o'clock. So if you know someone that's that age, invite them to come up for pizza if you're that age. Look forward to seeing you all at 6 o'clock. We also got our adult Bible study at 6 o'clock tonight. Look forward to everybody being there. It's a new study. We were just getting into it last week. Got plenty of booklets for it. So show up tonight, 6 o'clock, adults Bible study in the back as well. well. Let's see, what else do we got? Oh, also, yesterday we had the Cowgirl Challenge down at the arena, and I heard it went over great. It was a really good thing. I want to thank Rochelle and Jim for putting that on. I heard y'all did an amazing uh, job down there. Thank you. Well, absolutely. We know that. I was going, don't worry, I won't leave them out. Our arena team has been working very hard. They all work together to put that on. Great shows going on down there. Great times of devotion. It's an outreach ministry. So I do want to thank not just the arena team, and but on every team in this church. There's so many things going on. The landscaping, cleaning the church, taking meals to folks that need it, prayer team, women's group, everybody. So many different teams doing things. Praise God. Praise God. I want to thank y'all very much for doing what all y'all are doing, for serving the Lord. And if you're not on a team yet, don't worry about it. We got all kinds of teams in the back. We've got signups back there. We want everybody involved because this is the, the, the body of Christ, the church family working together to serve God. And I just think it's a blessing to see everybody doing those things. Also, uh, I want to thank Bob and Melissa. They've Gotten, they've taken it to the next level, a little insert here. Uh, now, they have a Facebook arena page. We've got on the website the different events. But also, here's just a calendar you might put up on your refrigerator. If you want to come up and watch some of the events, if you'd like to listen to the devotion, it's a great time to get together to see the ministry that's going on down at the arena. Really want to encourage you to do it. It's grown so much over the last few years. And this is our first year to have a full arena team. It's been a blessing. Everybody's jumped in and gotten a lot of work done. So it's just great because our events are just getting better and better. Uh, the barrel racing was really good on, uh, on Wednesday night. 
I want to thank Rick and Lonnie and everyone that's working on the ground down there because from what I heard, it was the best uh, barrel race they had ever had. So praise God for that. Everyone's just working together on that. Are there any other announcements? Oh, yes. Men's breakfast Saturday. All right. Yeah. That's a big one right there. And then also, uh, yes, ma'am. Yes. Got, got a stock dog clinic in there on Saturday or Sunday. Okay. Saturday the 7th. So that's on, that should be on our schedule. Everybody can see that and come and watch. Uh, check that out. So we're just excited about all the different things we have going on around here. And praise God, everybody's working together for that. Any other? Any, anything going on? Yes. Oh, now, now trust me. Now, I am not going to forget the fish fry. She and I got a little something in common. We're from Louisiana. And when the fish fries are coming, we're not going to forget. I've been drooling about it for a month and a half. So I'm going to be dehydrated by the time we get there. But no, I'm looking forward to that. Well, with that, I am ready for some kids time. Kids, come on up. God is so good. God is so Hey, buddy. Y'all know what this is? Well, how do you know it's food? You know what it might be? It might be Larry's worst nightmare. A preacher's going to preach so long he had to bring a sack lunch. No, maybe not. Do we want to look inside of it? Are you sure we want to look inside? What if it starts jumping up? Whoa. What if I let it out? No? No? All right, well, let's, uh, we'll look and see. Wait, we forgot something. What? Yes. Do you want, why don't you ask him this morning? Yeah, be loud. No. I'll do it. You're going to do it? What are you going to say? Okay, stand up and be loud. How are we doing this morning? Wow. Oh, I don't think that was loud enough. I don't think they all heard you. Let's try that again. You got to be a little bit louder. I don't think they all heard you. How are we doing this morning? Wow. Now they heard you. Amen. Well, let me see what's in the bag. You ready? What is this? Are you sure? Do we want to taste it and make sure? <laughs> well, what does this come off of? How do you know? Because, right. So if you saw this hanging on a tree, what would you say that it, what kind of tree would it be? There we go. Boy, y'all are smart. Good grief. It took me forever to figure that out. How about this? How do you know? And if this was hanging on a tree, what kind of tree would it be? It sure would. One of my favorites. Does anybody know what else might be in the bag? So if we walked, so let me ask you a question. If we walked out there and you saw this hanging on one tree, what kind of tree would you say it was? And this? Well, what about this one? Boy, y'all are smart. Parents got some smart kids up here, that's for sure. So if we saw those things hanging on a tree, we'd be like, that's, it's all fruit, right? And we'd say, oh yeah, it came off the apple tree and the lemon tree and the lime tree and all that. Well, guess what? Did you know that in the Bible, God says that we can produce fruit? It's called fruit of the Spirit, God fruit. It's things like love, joy, another word, long-suffering, like forgiving other people, meekness. All this fruit, it's called, hmm? yeah, that would be, that would be, yes, all those different things are God fruit. And just like when you saw this fruit, you knew what kind of tree it came off of, right? Yeah. Well, guess what? When other people see you producing that God fruit, like loving others, forgiving, joy and peace in your life, guess what they're going to think? That you belong to God. Because just like 
That fruit comes off the tree that produces it, like the lemon tree, the lime tree, the apple tree, the orange tree. Well, when you produce God fruit, guess who they're going to think you belong to? God, that's right. So it's important for us to always show people those qualities, those wonderful things that God wants us to show others, because when they do, they're going to see God working through us. Right? Amen. Let's pray together. Dear Lord, I pray that I always produce God fruit. Amen. Boy, they are in a hurry to go. Gently. Y'all take just a minute, get up, make sure you shake everybody's hand, hug their necks, and say good morning to them.
child to understand When I close my eyes in sleep eternal I'll be clean be clinging to a saving hand. Thank you, brother. Now, I know I say it a lot, but I can't thank you parents and grandparents and folks that bring the kids every Sunday. It means the world to me to see them up here. They're such a good time. They're such a blessing to the church. And I want the kids to always realize just how important they are to this church, and that's why we have that time for them up there. And so I just really appreciate y'all bringing them. I think it's such a blessing when I talk to other pastors and, and friends of mine in church, and they, they complain about, well, we only have a few kids coming. I think we're just so blessed that we had to expand our church just to accommodate the kids. So that's a blessing, and I appreciate that. And I always have fun with them. I had fun with the kids this morning up there. You know, a few weeks ago, or yeah, a few weeks ago, we talked about baptism, which baptism was our outward, our outward expression, our outward display of, of inward transformation. And then last week, we came back, and, and I was talking about how once you become saved, once you belong to the Lord, that what God is looking for is a person after his own heart. Because once you have a heart like God's, once your heart is a reflection of God's heart, then you begin and you have the opportunity to produce out of your life what God wants you to produce. You know, and what God desires for you to produce are, are those qualities, His qualities, the qualities of Jesus Christ. He wants you to put those qualities out there through your life so others can see. You know, the Word of God calls those traits, those qualities, those actions that reflect the Lord working in our lives the fruit of the Spirit, as I was talking to the kids about just a moment ago. And God's desire for your life is that your life puts His Son's traits out there on display for the world. That, that in your new life, Jesus Christ can look at your life and see Himself showing through. And, and it shows others who you belong to when you're producing that God fruit, as we call it. And that's what God wants you to be producing out of your life, the way you live, is the fruit of the Spirit. Because you know in this world, it's so easy to turn on the television, read the news, and all we see is negativity. We see all this negativity and attacks on others. But what God wants to see is His fruit being produced through His children. And in our scripture text today, God is telling us what that should look like. And I want to read to you just... Just real quickly in Galatians, and it's found in the fifth chapter, and you can read in the fifth chapter because it starts off by telling you all the things you're not supposed to be doing. But as I told y'all, when I grew up in the church, all I ever heard about was what I wasn't supposed to be doing. What we want to share is what we're supposed to be doing. And God tells us here in the fifth chapter, and in the, starting in the 22nd verse, the Word of God says, But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy. Peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, and temperance. And it says, against such there is no law. And if I were to jump down to the 25th verse, and it says, if we live in the Spirit, let us also walk in the Spirit. And I think I've preached on every subject every piece of fruit that God wants us to produce. But do you notice the very first one is love. Love like God. That's the fruit He wants to see producing. Love like Christ. Which means we love others unconditionally. The next one is joy. That our life should show others the joy that we have in our relationship with Jesus Christ. Joy in the promised eternity that God has given us through our salvation. Peace. 
we have a certain peace about us as Christians because we know what our destiny is. We know who we belong to. We know where we're going. Long-suffering. Long-suffering is about forgiving others. You know, it talks about God was long-suffering before he sent Christ. It's loving and forgiving others like God has forgiven us. He goes on to see gentleness. You know, gentleness is one we don't see a lot of these days because everybody wants to attack somebody. You say one wrong, one wrong word and they all want to attack somebody. God is saying gentleness, treating others with the compassion of Jesus Christ. Goodness. Goodness is letting godliness show through your life. Faith. Faith in Christ. Faith in your salvation. Faith in God. Meekness. Being humble. Being selfless. Part of what our Bible study is about in the back is going to be talking about selflessness. Temperance. Not allowing hurt or anger to influence your actions, but letting godliness influence your actions. Letting love influence your actions. You know, the Word of God is teaching us that the moment, that the moment each one of us accepted Jesus Christ as our Savior, that the Holy Spirit came to live inside of us. That's the Spirit of Jesus Christ comes to live inside of us the moment we receive salvation. And now that the Spirit of God is living inside of each one of us, you now have the ability to produce the fruit of the Spirit, the God fruit. I like to say it like this, you now have the ability to produce the traits of Jesus Christ in your life from the moment you accepted Christ because His Spirit has come to live inside of you. So the Spirit can guide your life. And it all starts when you let Jesus in. When you let the changing grace and the power of Jesus Christ begin to change you, begin to lead you. It's all about staying connected to Christ. You know, His traits can begin to show through your life when you're connected to Him. In John 15... 15th chapter, starting in the first through the fifth verse, Jesus said this, I am the true vine, and my father is the gardener. He cuts off every branch in me that bears no fruit, while every branch that does bear fruit he prunes so that it will be even more fruitful. You are already clean because of the, of the word I have spoken to you. Remain in me, and I will remain in you. No branch can bear fruit by itself. It must remain in the vine. Neither can you bear fruit unless you remain in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. If a man remains in me and I in him, he will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. The Word of God says apart from Christ, you can do nothing. The key is staying connected to Christ. It's realizing that you have His Spirit. You have Him living inside of you to give you the ability to put He and His traits on display for others. His Spirit gives you the ability to produce His traits. The Christ-like traits that God has always desired from each one of His children to put on display for the world. What we're talking about really is Jesus taking up residence inside of you. You remember when I said a couple of weeks ago about how the little boy had asked, is God really, is God bigger than that tree out there? You know, they told the little boy, God's bigger than everything. And the little boy, parents tell him, oh yeah, God's bigger than the tree. Was he bigger than that house? Yes. Is he bigger than that building? Yes. Is he bigger than the moon? Yes. And then the little boy says, well, if you said he comes to live inside of me, then why isn't he busting out of me? But that's part of the fruit of the Spirit. When God, when Christ, when the Spirit is living inside of us, those things should start coming out and being shown to others. What we're talking about is, is that residency of Jesus changing our walk in life, in our outlook. It's His traits, the, the fruit of the Spirit, it's an outward, it's an outward display, an outward proof of your relationship with Him. In Matthew, in the seventh, seventh chapter, 16th verse, Jesus said this, by their fruit, you will recognize them. Listen, 
by their fruit, you will recognize them. You see, God desires that you put his fruit out there for others to see so they'll recognize who you belong to. That is a sermon. Your life producing God fruit is a sermon to others because when they see God working through you, when they see those traits, they're going to see what they're missing. They're going to see what they don't have unless they've accepted the Lord Jesus Christ as their Savior. In the 15th chapter of John, the 8th eight, verse, it says this, This is to my Father's glory, that you bear much fruit, showing yourselves to be my disciples. You see, having a heart like God's, having a Christ-like heart, means that you want to put their traits on display for others. The same traits that we see in Jesus Christ when he came here to live on earth. When he came here to live among us, what we see in the accounts in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John is we see his traits, God's traits, the fruit of the Spirit on display for the world for the first time. Jesus said that that fruit you produce, those traits that you produce through your life, it's proof that you belong to him. It's proof that you belong to him and that he's working through you. Because when you're producing his fruit, when you are producing the traits of Jesus Christ, your life leads others to him. You show others his spirit working through your life. You know, the fruit we see in the fifth chapter of Galatians, it's an outward expression of an inward transformation. When I think of an example of the fruit of the Spirit, it's what I gave the kids this morning. I think about the fruit trees. And that's why they use the branch and the vine in the Word of God. A tree produces what it's supposed to produce. If you plant an apple tree, you don't expect to see oranges on it. You expect to see apples. And in the same way, as a Christian, you've been planted in God. You've been rooted in Christ, and you're supposed to start producing His fruit, His traits. So everybody knows who you belong to. So everybody sees, oh, that person must have a relationship with Jesus Christ. So I've got a question. And this is a question we all should be asking ourselves. When someone looks at you, when someone looks at me, when someone looks at Carl, when someone looks at Dean, when someone looks at anybody in this church, can they tell by the fruit you produce who you belong to? Can somebody see who you belong to by what you produce? Another question. Do you want Jesus to produce his fruit through your life? I think those are questions we need to ask ourselves. In John 15, 4, and I want to read this again. Abide in me. This comes out of the King James. Abide in me and I in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit of itself, except it abide in the vine. Jesus wants us to produce this through our lives. These things like love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, and temperance. You see, when you let Jesus become the Lord of your lives, when you allow the Spirit that you were given to lead you, to lead your life, Jesus will begin to work to produce those traits through your life, those attributes those godly qualities that God has always desired to see in your life. It's understanding that the power to produce what God desires comes from Jesus Christ. That's our power source. It's come from the spirit that he's given us to live inside of us. The key is understanding and connection. You have to stay connected to Christ. You have to let his spirit lead you in your life. Remember John 15, 5 said, I am the vine and you are the branches. Jesus needs us connected to him. We need to be connected. He is the vine and we are the branches that are supposed to produce his fruit. 
It goes on to say, if a man remains in me and I in him, he will bear much fruit apart from me. That's the key. Apart from me, you can do nothing. Apart from Jesus, you can't love like God loves. Apart from Jesus, you can't have that godly kind of love. Apart from Jesus, you can't experience his kind of joy. Apart from Jesus, you can't forgive like God because we never learned what forgiveness was until God forgave us. You could go down the whole list and say, apart from this, apart from Christ, we can't do this because he's the vine and he wants to produce it through us. Jesus is saying our responsibility, your responsibility is to stay connected to him. That's why he used the word abide. Abide means to stay connected to. The best way for God to share that, to teach us that, was to give us the example of the branch and the vine. It's in the accessories he needs to put on that Jeep. But you know, Jesus is not a bolt-on accessory to our lives. He, we don't make all of our own plans and our own goals and say, oh, well, now I'm going to bolt Jesus on like he's this new accessory. No, Jesus is our lives, and he walks with us to our goals. But they have to be consistent with his. He wants us to produce his qualities through our lives no matter what it is we do. It's about the connection, being connected to Christ. It's staying connected to Christ through prayer. You know, it's hard to know what someone wants to do unless you talk to them. And God wants to hear from you every day, all day. Starting our day by connecting to the power source. Getting in the Spirit and letting the Spirit direct our day. When the Spirit of God, when Christ is directing our day, we begin to produce more of His fruit. We put His traits out there on display for others. It's realizing it's not up to us to live the Christian life, it's up to us to allow him to live out through our lives and to be seen by others. It's understanding that Jesus wants to live through us. Because if we stay connected to him, if we stay connected to the Spirit, if you allow him to be the Lord of your life, you're going to allow him to guide your thoughts. And when your thoughts are like his thoughts, then your actions begin to reflect his actions. Your responses begin to reflect his responses. And what you produce becomes his. Your attitude, your direction, your path will begin to produce God fruit. Because it will be his power. It will be his life. It'll be his fruit that we put on display for us. You know, when others see you produce that, think about that. They want what you have. You're showing them something different than what the world is showing them. I think about road rage. The story I told years ago, I I had this client of mine and she was quite a pistol. Well, she had a bad habit of driving. She would tell me she would put her book, now this was before we had all the cell phones that you could, she'd put her book on the steering wheel. She's driving down the highway, putting her makeup on, and reading her book. She pulls off the highway, the guy pulls up beside of her and starts cussing her out. So she rolls her window down, and she says, God bless you, and rolled her window back up. Road rage versus God fruit. You see, God wants others to see his son working through. Boy, y'all start, I saw a bunch of y'all start tugging on each other when I said road rage. (laughs) But y'all better take a sack of fruit with you when you leave after church today. Grab a sack of fruit. God wants others to see his son working through your life. It's the power of the spirit to produce his qualities that God desires for you to have in your life. And this was brought up yesterday. In order for a fruit, or in order for a fruit tree to produce what it must produce, what's the first thing that has to happen? It has to be planted. It has to be planted. It has to have a root system. And when it's fed and it's watered, 
over time, it begins to produce fruit. And it's the same way with us. When we're rooted in Jesus Christ, and we allow the Word of God, we allow God to water us, to feed us, and to nurture us, the Spirit's going to begin to produce the fruit that God wants you to show the world, the fruit that we're really short of today. So I just want to say this. Let God work in your life so you can show others something different than what the world shows them, the fruit of the Spirit. Amen. And praise God, before we have uh, our sacraments today, we do have some baptisms this morning. So, praise God. Brother, Brother Mike. Do we want to go youngest to oldest? All right. If there's anybody that feels led this morning to give your life to the Lord, please feel free to come up during this time. Now, wait a minute. Before you jump in, now you're not going in to go swimming, are you? Okay. Would you tell everybody who you are this morning? Because I bet there might be one or two people that don't know who this princess is. I'm Ashlyn. Well, Ashlyn, come here, and I'm going to help you up. We ready? Oh, she's jumping in by herself. She, ooh, is it a little cool? Face Brother Mike, if you'll face that way. So... I have a question. Do you believe Jesus is the Son of God? And that He died for your sins on the cross? And do you repent? Do you ask for forgiveness of those sins? Amen. Put your fingers over your nose. I baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Praise God. Miss Ashton, you just come stand right over here for a minute. Mama, come stand next to her. She's looking a little cold. All right, Caden, come on up. I'm so proud of you, both of y'all this morning. And y'all, this is Caden Joe. She's here to give her life to the Lord today. Aiden, you believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God, that he died on the cross for the remission of your sins? And do you ask him in repentance for the permission, forgiveness of your sins? Amen. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Praise God. It is a celebration in heaven today that it gained two more angels. Amen. You need another one? Sure. And if I could, if I could have those that are helping us serve our communion today, if you'd please come to the front. I'm so glad y'all got to come in for that. Yes, sir. You went to Louisiana and you came back? Was the food good? Yeah. yeah. Well, I'm glad you're back. Because we might have had to come looking for you. We don't want an alligator to get you or something. They have alligators. I know they got alligators. I ate one of them. Fried alligator. Tastes like chicken. Yeah. I'm glad you're here this morning. We 
are so blessed with these kids, we just never know what they're going to say to. Do you know on the, on the night that Jesus was betrayed, he told his disciples, when you, when you take of this bread, think of my body that was, was broken for you. He said, when you take of the cup, remember my blood that was shed for you. His body was broken. His blood was shed for the forgiveness of our sins. But he asked one thing. He said, before we take of these sacraments, that we forgive others just as they have forgive, he has forgiven us. If y'all would, please bow with me in prayer. Father, I pray that in the moment of silence we're about to have, we can think about the perfect forgiveness you've given each one of us. Because, Lord, none of us were ever perfect. We've all sinned and come short of your glory. And, Father, in the next few moments of silence, I want us to think about that person or those people that we need to forgive as perfectly and completely as you've forgiven us. Father, thank you for the sacrifice of your son to cleanse each one of us. It's in his name we pray. Amen. He walked the streets of Calvary Rugged cross People Crowd stood by and watched the man They'd heard him preach before No one could ever be worthy Of such love We'd never find When he was on Look of love was on his face, horns on his head, blood that stained his scarlet robe, had stained it crimson red. His eyes were on the crowd that day, yet he looked. Stained his scarlet robe 
had stained it crimson red His eyes were on the crowd that day Yet he looked ahead in time When he was on the cross I was on his mind He knew me Yet he loved me He whose glory made the heavens shine Amen. Could I have our prayer team come up at this time? If, if there's anybody that would like to come pray with our prayer team or be prayed for, uh, our prayer team can come up here during this time. Brother Mike, now Carl, I'll have y'all do another song if you can during that time. Amazing grace, how sweet. The sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found. Was blind, but now I see.
But now I'm fine. Praise God. Well, it's such a blessing that everybody was here this morning, and, and we are just so incredibly blessed with this church family and everything that y'all do for people and you do for the church. I just want to thank every one of you. I love every one of you. I really appreciate being part of this church family. I know Brother Mike and I are humbled every week when we see people coming to give their life to the Lord, and uh, amen. Yeah, amen. So if y'all would, please bow with me in prayer. Heavenly Father, we're so blessed to have been in your house today, Lord. That we can share your love, your compassion, your forgiveness with others. And Father, what a praise today that we have these children that are here in our, in our congregation, Lord, our church family. That they're being taught and brought up in, the, in your word. And Father, we just, we just love to see the innocence of their heart. And, and Lord, when we see days like today, when we see one of our wonderful, blessed little children give their lives to the Lord, it's just such a blessing for each one of us. And Father, we just want to thank you for giving us this church family and allowing us to serve others, to share your word and your message. And I pray that you use us as your instruments, as your mouthpieces in this world. And Father, we just want to thank all of our church family members that do so much for others, that do so much for the body of Christ. And Father, we want to pray for those that are lost, that they see the light that brings them to you, that they see your son, Jesus Christ, and that they find the perfect forgiveness that's been given through him. Father, we just pray that you use each one of us in our own unique way to share your message, your word, your compassion, your forgiveness with others. And Lord, it's in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, that we pray. Amen.